Sometimes the show is just not going to resonate with you. It's just not going to connect. And that's largely how I felt about Dynamite this week. It's kind of in this weird middle ground where it wasn't great. So I can't just come on here and overwhelmingly praise it. But it also wasn't like so brutally bad where it makes for an exciting rant that I'm sure a lot of you long for the days for seeing me to do again. You know, like some of the old Raw review rants back in the day, some of the old Impact review rants during the day especially. It's just, it, it doesn't connect on either side. Like, it's just weird. And it was, it was a miss to me. It, it certainly was a miss to me. Um, maybe they didn't care as much because they thought, hey, we're going up against the NBA Finals. I don't know what it was. I started off well enough, though, Ricky Starks versus Darby Allen. Now, me personally, I have talked about this before, I don't know if Darby Allen's ever going to really connect for me as a character. I just don't get it. You know, I'm old, I guess, but I don't get it. I don't understand it. I just, I'm just not feeling it. I don't get the vibe. I appreciate that that audience likes him. That's cool. Okay. I'm going to have to like everybody. Like, eh. At least there's an attempt to try and be a character. Like, at least, if anything else, out of this match, I saw two guys that were trying to not just be flippy, twisty, kicky guys, but actually try to have some type of character, some type of persona. Match is pretty good. That uh, coffin drop finish, like, it's actually a breath of fresh air, I gotta say. With all the other ridiculous crap that you see and all the other spots that you see, like, it looks very basic, but you also feel like, Compared to some of the other stuff, like, if you land wrong, you could really screw somebody up, and it looks like you're just dropping a bunch of dead weight on the swole of somebody's back. Like, that's got to suck. Like, that's the thought process you have. So I thought it was cool. I, I actually would like this story and this feud to continue. I kind of wish they wouldn't have had Darby Allen win here. Like, you can let this go all the way to the pay-per-view. That would be just okay with me. Um, you got Cody Rhodes coming back and answering Brody Lee's challenge for the dog collar match. Now, honestly, what looked more ridiculous on Cody? Is it the neck tat or is it that man brooch? Some of y'all are going to point to the glitter shoes. And let me, be, let me be clear. Ain't nothing wrong with the glitter shoes. Um, I think he looks like a jackass in them. But I look fly when I rock them. That's all I'm going to say. But the neck tat, like sometimes it just really stands out just how ridiculous that thing looks. And then the man brooch, like, what was that supposed to be? Just weird. And it felt like this promo was like half an ad for his TBS show and half match hype. And it's cool, though. Like, it's okay. Like, it's kind of following the pattern of what you would expect a Cody promo segment to be. The no, and then he comes back, and he's defying everything else. Like, and that doesn't really bother me. Uh, what bothered me more so was the brawl uh, with his crew and the Dark Order afterwards. Like... Imagine telling six of the guys backstage that, hey, you're going to have to sell this really shitty-looking spot for Brandy. Brody Lee's supposed to be big badass, and they scrap, and then he keeps running away, and he keeps coming back. Like, that was dumb. I'm sorry. It didn't do Cody any justice, and it certainly didn't do Brody Lee any justice. And this was really supposed to get me hyped for their upcoming dog collar match next week on Dynamite. It really didn't do so. Um, we had a couple of promos after this. You had FTR first, where the Bucks ultimately came and they super kicked Tony Savane, and it seemed uncalled for. You must not like his earring. Yeah. The Bucks to me at this point are best in small doses. Ain't no reason to burn the candle on two both ends too harshly. Like, take it slow with them. Let them do this annoying stuff. It's much easier to hate the young Bucks, at least from my perspective. Uh, the SCU promo kind of made me laugh because it was like, it was really short. You could tell this was scripted. They wrote it out. They planned it, probably rehearsed it for hours just to get through two or three lines. I like Scorpio Sky, but promos, at least this, this one wasn't exactly a strength. And I don't think Kazarian's ever been a rip roar and rock and promo guy, but can't wait for the Fleeming Keyboard Fingers of Fire to tell me in the comments just how wrong I am. The uh, Moment of Greatness, or whatever the hell it's called, FTR versus SCU uh, Tag Team Championship match. You got Hangman Page on commentary. I, again, you're doing you're doing the slow burn here between him and Omega. I appreciate the patience. I appreciate the slow burn. But I didn't know if he needed to be out here for this match, but maybe he did. Maybe he did. Uh, match, okay. Like, again, just 
nothing really stood out to me, nothing really memorable. And you know what it probably was, like as I think about it now, I'm getting ready to talk about it, is the fact that it had no Luchasaurus and only a couple of minutes of MJF. That didn't help. That certainly didn't help. Chris Jericho versus Isaiah Cassidy, the young hotshot gets his chance against the big time. Felt like Chris Jericho being on the show was more about hyping up the 30 years of Jericho celebration coming up next week, and I can't personally wait for that one. Why do they have to persist, though, and insist on having Luther show up and be a thing? We do not, the average person, know who the hell Luther is. We do not care who the hell Luther is. And we don't care about any history there might be between him and Eric Jericho. It is irrelevant. Like, who gives a shit? Like, why is this a thing? Why? And you can see where they're still trying to play some type of slow tease here between uh, Matt Hardy and Jericho and, you know, what they're going to do in terms of tag match. So that, that maybe is interesting. But why do they keep pushing this Luther thing, this Luther guy? Like, he's supposed to be somebody we give a crap about. We don't! Stop! And, and speaking of pushing people that we don't know about, we don't care about, the, the whole thing with Miro being the best man and planning the basketball party, okay, like, cool enough, although, admittedly, I didn't think the vignette was all that great. But then you get to the, the reveal at the end. Who was that? Was it Billy Mitchell? Like, I don't know who the hell it is. And maybe some of you know who the hell it is. I'm assuming some type of video game legend, world record holder, some type of thing. That was some of the early glances I got from Twitter last night. But, like, if you're going to do this, can you at least do it with something that maybe more, somebody more than 5% of your audience might actually know about? Is that that hard? You got some pretty deep pockets. Could you bring in somebody that's actually relevant here? Could you bring in somebody that actually people know about and give a crap about? Like, this whole way of introducing Miro in and of itself just seems really odd. He's coming away from one really crappy wedding angle on Raw for WWE to now he's in this really stupid wedding type of story. And he's Miro. Like, really, is this the best way we should be featuring him? I'm just saying. Orange Cassidy defeated 10. Again, it's kind of whatever. MJF bringing presents. He comes bearing gifts for the inner circle. He came bearing gifts. He knocked before he entered the room. He greeted Chris Jericho and the inner circle, congratulated him on victory, and brought four of the five members of the inner circle jackets to celebrate the victory. That's a pretty nice guy if you ask me. Now, you might say, well, it was kind of a heelish move and a dickish move to not have ones for Sammy Guevara. One, Sammy Guevara doesn't deserve one. Two, it's just an honest mistake. Things happen. Stuff gets left out of orders. MJF can't control that. Like, you just can't please everyone. He brought 80% of the faction jackets out of his own pocket. And people are still going to complain. It's horrible. But it comes down to the big thing, like, does MJF want to join the inner circle? Does Chris Jericho want MJF to join the inner circle? Like, this is a question that could go on for ages throughout the history of time. And I am here for every single moment of it. And I'll tell you what else I am here for. Whew, sweet Jesus. Uh, Red Velvet. Yes. Me likes those cakes all day long. Match was actually pretty good between her and Britt Baker. I actually enjoyed it. Even though I was more bedazzled by... The bejeweled, the glittery, shiny uh, trunks of red velvet. I'm sorry. Like, likes what I likes. You don't like it? I don't care. Thank you very much. Uh, red velvet. The main event. What do I say about this main event? Typically, anytime you get Eddie Kingston on a prompt on the mic, you feel like you could, it could be pretty good. So he's picking Moxley's opponent. Moxley's putting the AEW World Championship on the line. And of all the people in the entire roster, or anybody you could bring in, you're going to bring in the Butcher? Like, you look at the Butcher, and he looks, in theory, like he could be the part. But then you, you think he reminds me more of a Bully Busick than he does anything else. Like, what the hell has the Butcher done? 
that in any way puts him in this spot where he's a credible challenger. And then to have John Moxley have to have such a competitive fight and have such a competitive match with him. I hate when they do this with guys. Like, it's one thing if you're getting ready to put, push a guy like the Butcher to the moon. It's another thing if you're going to position him to potentially be a top-level guy and a future world champion. Do you really look at that dude and see either of those happening? He's, just, he's a jag. He's just another guy. He's a guy who certainly could be a valuable hand on your roster, but you're not building your company around him. Well, right now, you are building your company around John Moxley. He's been the world champion for 200-plus days. Stop doing these types of super competitive back and forth 50-50 champ has to struggle to win type of matches, especially when Moxley's not that type of baby face. He's not the, get the, the fans behind him and mox up. Come forward, ready to go. You don't do that. So I just, the main event was just annoying to me as much as it did anything else. Similar to the kind of old mindset that goes through in professional wrestling of, um, you know, these boys and girls just killing themselves with stupid spots in stupid matches and everybody does it so nobody stands out and now people are making less money and actually really hurting themselves it's just whack so I won't say that Dynamite was whack this week because I enjoyed the opening match between Darby Allen and Ricky Starks I certainly did uh, the back and forth between Chris Jericho and MJF I thought was very good you know sweet red velvet I, I could have that on my TV anytime believe me uh, in, in general, it just there's a show that largely missed the mark to me. Just not a lot of good things that I really remember. And maybe part of that is just because, you know, sometimes when it comes to these types of sh wrestling shows, if it's very either heavily match-focused or it features a bunch of guys I'm not that interested in, I, I just don't care that much. And that's probably what happened this week. Um, but we'll see what they do next week. Getting ready first soon for their one-year anniversary show. So let me know what you thought about this week's Dynamite in the comment section below. Smash that like button. Subscribe if this is your first time checking it out or you fight against the urge. Subscribe. Smack that. Yeah. yeah. Subscribe. Click the bell. So that way, what the hell, you can be notified anytime a new video gets uploaded on this channel. That's what you should do. All right? You're I'm the Slay Daddy, and this is Otero Central. It's not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. See you later.